and welcome to TMX New Adventures. Lisa here. Now look, we're continuing on our gifting uh, series and we're going to make an amazing tomato relish today. Now I love this recipe for a couple of reasons. The first is tomatoes are in season, okay? So they're not that expensive to be able to get the 1.2 kilos of tomatoes for this recipe. Also, if you're thinking, wow, that's a lot of relish, it is. But you can halve it and I'm going to give you the tips today on how to halve this recipe down if you don't want to make the three or four jars that it's going to make and by the way it makes three and a bit jars of this size okay so it is a great gifting idea uh, because it makes so much that's three or four people that you can give these to uh, and yesterday remember we made the awesome uh, cookies in a jar style recipe the Christmas cookies go over to tmxingadventures.com.au and download the labels and grab the recipe for the jar there but let's get started with this recipe it's on cookie do it's called tomato relish and I love using a, a mixture of both ripe tomatoes and not ripe tomatoes so if you happen to be growing your own we had a big storm here through last night with golf golf ball size hail so we actually had a whole lot of tomatoes knocked off our bushes so that's actually what prompted me to make this yes i've got some already but hey it keeps for ages in your pantry if you sterilize and seal your jars well so i'm going to make it i'm going to give some away but then i'll just leave some in the pantry for when we need it to go with uh say a cheese board or some uh meat like ham it's beautiful on ham and things like that so there's lots of, even on pizza okay it's got that beautiful sweet sour salty bite to it which is just amazing so let's get straight onto this recipe the first thing I ask you to do is to prepare 1.2 kilograms of tomatoes. It does say to skin them. It does say to soak them with some salt. Well, not soak them, but cover them and then let them drain. I don't do that. You guys know I'm in and out as quick as possible when it comes to thermomixing. So the first thing I've just done is I've diced them all up. I have two reasons. I want to check there's nothing else inside them besides the tomatoes. Uh, but also uh, you just want them a bit smaller. So for those that are a bit larger, like tomatoes, like I've got these beautiful yellow tomatoes that were quite large, I quartered them instead. So kind of so that they're about uniform size. By the way, uh, say hi if you're watching on today. Talks about sterilizing, I'm gonna give you a tip on that in a second. Tells you to place the Varoma in the mixing bowl way in these chopped, peeled tomatoes. And in my case, they're just chopped, not peeled. And then it tells you to put them into a large bowl to then put 350 grams of onions cut into chunks. Um, I rated from my veggie patch some leek. I'm gonna use leek today. Uh, that works, but brown or purple will work perfectly fine. I reckon you could even use jarred onion if you were you know, at a pinch and needed to. Then it says to put it all together and it's gonna mix it on speed two to cover it with salt. Now, I told you I like to give you shortcuts, put it in a bowl and actually just, or even put it straight into there, it doesn't matter, and put the salt on it and just let it sit for as long as time you've got. If you don't have time, chuck it straight in and let's keep going. So I'm actually gonna keep on going because I actually just wanna show you how to do it. So I did, I'm literally not soaking it, I'm not taking skins off, um, I'm literally just gonna do it now at a pinch, okay, like just as it goes, so let's do it. So now it's got brown sugar. I don't do brown sugar, I do raw sugar, in it goes. It's a lot of sugar, but we are making four jars, so don't stress too much about it. And typically you're not gonna eat this like by the spoonful. It's actually something to accompany something else. It's got beautiful curry powder in it. So I've just got my Keens. This Keens powder has been around for a long time. I think it expired in 2000. Oh, and I probably need to actually buy more because I think that's the end. So it says two teaspoons of that. If you've got like your babbers and those sorts of things, some of you have been around a while and maybe your Skinny Mixes fans and stuff like that, you might have your babbers meat, um, meat curry powder. That would work perfectly fine as well. Oh, I love that smell. Then it asks for some um, yellow mustard seeds. Now, you can use yellow mustard seeds and I usually would have followed the recipe. However, a little while ago, I couldn't get yellow mustard seeds and I use them in my pickling cucumbers and beetroots, um, but I could buy this pickle spice, pickling spice. Now I do now have the yellow mustard seeds, but I thought, you know what, I'm just, I've got these open because some of them are used. So I'm just gonna use that instead. And it says two teaspoons. I'm gonna put in about a tablespoon of this. Now it does have other bits and pieces in there. So it's not just yellow mustard seeds in there. It has mustard seeds, black peppercorns, dill, allspice and bay leaves. So it does have other things, but you know what? It tastes amazing, it doesn't matter, okay? So be confident and swap that in if you need to. Black mustard seeds would also work just as well. Okay, malt vinegar. I don't have malt vinegar. 
I do have apple cider vinegar and I do have balsamic. So I do realize this is gonna taste, taste you know, a little different to traditionally, but it'll still be amazing, so it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna put in my apple cider, excuse the massive container, that's how we roll around here. I'm gonna put in most of it as apple cider because I do have an abundance of apple cider. Um, so it's easy to use more of that. And then I'm going to put in just classic balsamic for the other part. Um, this one down here was actually balsamic and white wine vinegar because that's, again, what I had. I've not got malt. Oh, I might have to top it up with the other one. That's okay. So here we go. At a, at, a, at a pinch, you could use white vinegar, I reckon, as well, and you'd be perfectly fine with that. All right, a little bit more. Now, you can see there's a fair amount in there already. This is going to cook down for an hour. So it's not something you're going to want to make and, you know, head out the door straight away to give it to somebody. Uh, you actually going to need to put this in in advance and then just, but it can just sit there and be done like in the evening after dinner. All right. So it is an hour cook time and then it's got some corn flour at the end. Here's our drained mixture or in our case, just in a thermo server because I didn't drain it. I just, and you can see the salt was sprinkled on top. Let's see if I can do this without making too much of a mess. Now you'll see it's quite a full bowl. That's okay. It's going to cook down beautifully. And I'll just put my onions in, which are the next step. I don't think I've got enough onion, but that's okay. Oh, the onion should have been in that mix. So that's why it's not asking for that. Check this out. In it goes. So it's a very full bowl of liquid. Okay. That's because as well, remember your tomatoes, they don't shrink down until they start cooking. So as much as it looks like it's over the max line, it actually won't be. It's because those the tomatoes are so bulky in there. Okay. So I'm not worried about that, even though it is quite high up the bowl. So here we go. Cooking step on the lid. Now it says to place the Varoma in position instead of the measuring cup. This is to let that humidity out so that it reduces down in size. So Varoma in place, get that out of there. And then it's gonna cook down. Now this is actually a really good time to put in your jars and sterilize them. So you have 60 minutes. These will not take 60 minutes to sterilize. 10 minutes is probably all you need, but it does need to be steaming. So what I would suggest, put them in at the beginning, put the lids in at the beginning as well. You could probably fit two in there to go. Um, and then once you can see the steam coming out the top, by the way, you do need a lid on that just to fill in the gaps there. So you do have to have it fully combined like that. But um, give it then, you've got to wait for the steam to come out. It's got to be at the 100 degrees, right? It's got to create the steam. The steam is what sterilizes it. Then let it for five to 10 minutes to sterilize. Get your oven mitts, lift it out. And if you want to put your other two in at that point in time, your other two jars, you can put your other two in and give it another 10 minutes. If you let them sit in there for the full time, it's probably not going to make a difference to anything. You, what you will notice is if you leave them in too long, the outside of your jar will get splattered from the liquid. And the other thing is you do actually want to not have this on, this lid on the entirety of the time, because remember, we're trying to reduce it. So by putting that on, it is containing some of that ability to reduce the liquid down. So that's why I would say kind of do uh, 10 minutes with one, put the others in for 10 minutes and then take it all off. And when you're ready to take it all off, get your oven mitts and take them out and then leave this here to do its job as the splatter guard to stop things landing on your bench. Then after uh, one hour, and by the way, you may see your Thermomix. I just need to make note of this. When I made this the other day, my Thermomix had, sorry, just putting that down. My Thermomix actually had a, an error come up on the screen halfway through. It's no big deal. It was a motor too hot error and it stopped. It had the bowl locked and it said something about cleaning the grates or something, um, which I can't get to anyway, so I just left it. And it then, in about 15 minutes later, it unlocked itself and then we just continued on with the recipe. So just be mindful if you do get an error through it, it's no big deal. It will fix itself. The hardest thing to know if you do though is what timing you had left. I hadn't caught the time exactly of what, where I was up to. I'd kind of, I'd walked back and forth enough times to realize, you know, we were down under half an hour. We were down to probably like, like the last 20 minutes, maybe. But I didn't pay that much of attention. So when it then did that override and it stopped and it made it, it reset that step and said 60 minutes again. And obviously you don't want to do 60 minutes again because you weren't 
you know, you were three quarters of the way through potentially. So just my biggest advice to you guys as well on this recipe is check your clock. So right now, as I spin it, the dial in a second, I'll look at the clock and go, okay, so in about an hour, that's about there. Because then if it does do that override, which it's fantastic, it does that override, okay? That means you're not going to be burning your bowl. It means that, you know, it literally is protecting your machine. So like, how cool is that, that it's got that there? Um, but yes, just... Just be mindful of that. Check your clock before you start so that you, if that happens to you, um, no need to stress over it, but if it happens to you, then you know that, oh, look, I've got about 10 minutes left. So then when that that hour is done, you come back, add two tablespoons with a little bit of vinegar uh, in it. You shake it up in a jar, add it in, it thickens, put it in your sterilized jars, put your lid on. They say to invert it, which I did do on these ones. I don't usually do that, but invert it. And then you'll know if, the, if it's sealed because the little pop pops in. I can't pop this because it's popped in. All right. And then it's, it's shelf stable and it's ready to go. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's very, very thick and gelatinous and um, perfect some, on some brie cheese, I reckon, or even some tasty if you were stuck um, and just ph phenomenal to give to somebody. And as I said, you don't have to spend that time straining it if you don't have the time to. So that's a plus as well. Now, those of you on Facebook, thanks for popping on and saying hi today. I will be uploading this onto YouTube in the coming days. And when I do, uh, YouTube will have added onto the end of it, the last step in this recipe, the corn flour step as well. So do remember to go over and subscribe to YouTube for the replay so that you know when, you know, or you can see the whole recipe or you know if you've missed things. Sometimes it's really hard to find these videos back in Facebook later. So it's worth being over there because it's a bit like a library then, which you can go search so much easier for the recipes you're after. But otherwise, guys, thanks for joining me today. Let me know if I can support you with anything about with your Thermomix. Uh, remember, those of you in Australia, we have $29 bowl offer on for another three days. Monday, 11 a.m., it is over for the year. So if you've got friends and family thinking about a Thermomix, please do pass my details. I'd love to support them to get one and uh, help them get the very most out of it as well. But otherwise, guys, take care. And I'm going to see you back here for another video tomorrow. And I'm going to spin this dial up one hour, 120 degrees. Reverse speed 0 0.5 and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye guys. Take care Okay, it's been an hour on the chutney and we're gonna finish this recipe off now You can see it's quite been quite bubbling You can see on that aroma the mess it's made underneath and even on top as I show you the camera here You can see how jelly like it is. So I'm just gonna scrape that in There we go which is good because that means it's actually thickened up, which is really what we were after. You can see some of those spices have come to the top. Just push them in as well. We don't want to lose them. And then let's take the lid off carefully. Remember it is hot, so we're just going to spin it sideways and put that aside. I can scrape in some of that to my food later, into my food, into my jars later, but I've got my jars ready to go. So look at that in there. It's just... Beautiful. Now it's not completely done done yet. We've got one more step. We've got some corn flour to add. So what we're going to do is it says place two tablespoons of corn flour and some vinegar in a jar. I actually use water this time just because that's what I had on hand. Um, I've done it with vinegar. I don't think the water will make a difference. So stir to form a, a, a paste and then add the corn flour. In it goes. You can still see it's quite a lot still. It's still like 1.5 litres in there. Go next. Stir with the aid of a spatula. Now, because it's over 90 degrees, corn flour thickens. So that's the science of corn flour is it has to be over 90 degrees to thicken. And you don't want to pour your corn flour straight in. If you pour it straight in, you'll end up with just a glob of like clag glue looking stuff in the middle. But look at that thickening there now. Now, it's got a bit of a quick cook that it does. So we'll go next. Place the basket on top. So instead of this, the Varoma this time, and it's got a two minute cook. Now this is just dispersing the things through, the things, the corn flour through. So it's just putting it through so that it's nice and even. And then we're gonna put it in our jars, ready to flip upside down and leave on a shelf until we're ready to use it. Now if by some chance one of yours doesn't pop down and seal properly, it needs to be kept in the fridge, okay? so. It only can be shelf um, kept if you have sterilized jars and if the if it goes airtight. So by the lid popping in, okay. If they're still moving on that lid, it's not uh, tight and it's not going to then hold its its goodness, okay. So just be mindful of that as well. So in my haste, 
I'm going to speed this process up as I do. I'm just going to turn it a little faster for a second. At one minute mark, I'm going to stop and I'm going to jar it up for you guys so that you can see this process. So we actually use our lid here as our, our funnel. It's a great tool as a funnel. Just wait for those arms to unlock. It does have that 20 second cool down on most recipes to make sure everything is stationary in that bowl before it unlocks and it's gonna open up. Now, um, while I remember as well, I have an ebook with a whole lot of gifting recipes in it that is just an amazing resource if you are going to be making Christmas gifts. There's all sorts of things from spice mixes to relishes, this recipe's in there. So there's 31 recipes in there. So if you would like a copy of that, please do comment below and I will uh, get that to you. It's in my most recent newsletter. So I'll get the newsletter to you and then you can subscribe for future editions of that if you'd like. Now, I've overfilled that jar. Can you see that? That is too full for it to be able to seal nicely. So I will have to actually scoot some out of that, but that's okay. You want to stop about two centimeters short of the top. Okay, now these are 750 ml jars, just for reference. Same size that I used yesterday on the awesome um, cookies in a jar, the Christmas cookies, okay? So in this goes, don't be tempted to lick it, okay? It is boiling, boiling, boiling hot, and it takes quite some time to cool because it's, you know, toffee-like, I guess you could say. You know, you can see how thick and luscious that is. So it takes some time for that to actually cool down. So don't be tempted to put your finger in it, it will burn. Okay, now you can see here, now it's a little more than two jars, I guess you could say. There's a little bit there that I won't be able to fit in in this one, and obviously this one I need to take a little bit out. So I'll take that out off camera. I won't make you sit here and watch me do that, but let me just show you how to finish this one off. So lid on, quite tight. You need to work quickly because your jars are quite hot, so I just quickly do that. You might want to get an oven mitt to do that. And then once that's on, upside down, okay, until it's completely cool. And that's it. Now, as I said, though, if you don't get it airtight in the fridge instead, on cheese, on ham, I reckon even on meat, it would be beautiful. Like on, like instead of putting a barbecue sauce on your ribs, putting the tomato relish on your ribs. But otherwise, guys, I hope you've enjoyed that. Let me know if you want the um, amazing ebook with all the gifting recipes in it. Let me know. Love to get that to you. But otherwise, take care. And I look forward to seeing you in tomorrow's video. Make sure you're telling friends and family about these videos so they can get the very most out of FMMix. But we'll see you then. So bye for now.